we're here at Green Meadow Woods, which is a beautiful site in between. You've got my Saru over there, Wellington Drive poking through, and then Thornhill just around the corner. Last year, we came here with Richard Davis from the Cumberland Ancient Society, who took us on a tour. Richard, we're back here today. Last year, we did this video where we met in Tesco Express car park, and we walked up. The video went on for probably an hour or two, I guess, but people loved it because this set of woods here, people haven't realised, you've been banging on, banging on about it for years, to be honest, but a lot of other people haven't realised how important it is, you know, the kind of just the significance. It's archaeological importance. Archaeological, not, yeah, not just the nice trees, the, the, the uh, history. Oh, it's really important is there's, there's a Bronze Age graveyard in there, and then there's 326 metres of walling made out of a quartz conglomerate that comes off the side of the mountain here. And, um, and we, we struggled for years, we've done archaeological dig after archaeological dig on that wall, trying to work out what the date of the wall is and what it's for. Uh, more recently, we're getting closer, we, we think uh, some of the testing we've been doing now, we think it's going to be turn out to be second century, which puts it smack at the beginning of Christianity. In this area. And then maybe it must be associated with the, the the Saint Shrine of Saint Bernard. It was a third biggest pilgrim site in Wales, so maybe the walls got something to do with that. If it does come out in the second century, we're waiting for the proof. Crazy. It was a really, really popular talk. Take us up to the edge here, because yeah. the reason we're here today isn't a nice reason. No. Richard regularly walks in the woods, and the last month or two he spotted an oak tree. Yeah. A beautiful Again, it's an estimate, 150 year old oak tree has actually been set on fire. We're going to chat for a moment before we go and see the tree, which is just tucked up from the path here. But tell us about what's around us now. Well, it's, I mean, this is, in, I might be biased, you know, I grew up in the Twinings, by the pantry shop there, so I might be a little biased. But I think this is the most beautiful little patch of woodland in the whole of Torbay. It's got a really diverse wildflower population. It's got a really nice sort of mix of uh, uh, trees. It's um, on the on the eighteen hundreds tide map. It's the first decent map we got of the area. It's it's a field, and it's called coppice, which means that someone had planted um, a lot of beech and hazel in here to make charcoal. Yeah, but we do believe it's older than that. You know. That was probably done in about the 1500s, but I think it goes back further than that. It's designated as semi-natural ancient woodland. Yeah, so it's been used as a woodland, but they're in indicating it's in the it much, much older. One of the indicators the wooden enemy, yeah? And another indicator is ancient beach, yeah? And it's got all that. And it's got other things. It's got things like creeping jenny, which is quite a rare wildflower. Tiny little yellow, it's beautiful, but uh, rare, you know. And uh, so, I, all in all, to me, this is the nicest bit of woodland we've got as well. So it's the nicest bit of woodland for not just the visible, but the, you know, the historical side of it. And then you're going to take us to this tree, which uh, I'll be honest. When Garrett, when um, Richard messaged me and said. Um, a tree has been set on fire. I didn't expect to see what, to, to find out what we saw. It's shocking. Let's have a look. Take a step to it. Look at the, the, the bluebells and the, the wood anemone and, and celadine. It's everything points to it. I always say it's because of the, the, the quartz conglomerate. You know, remember? Poke night. We yeah. We talked about the quartz. You know, this ancient seabed. Well, that's, this place is littered with it. And I'm sure that it has an effect on the, on the plants. You know, trees are living beings. They talk to each other. They care for each other. It... Right, I'm going to turn the camera around. Now, this is the bit that blew my mind. So, some people have been up here setting fire to this tree here. Go closer, Rich. Tell us, I mean, this is an oak tree. Beautiful, and beautiful trees, oaks. Um, they, got, they reckon 2,500 species of life live on an oak. You know, 38 species of birds in this country depend on oak trees. So over uh, 1,200 or 300 species of insects live on oak. You know, 
well, the insects, you've got no birds, you've got all, all sorts of disasters. Yeah? They, they, um, they reduce our carbon footprint more than any other tree. So they're massively important in the fight for climate change. Neil's out of it. I'm only getting close. This, this, this is what's happened here, right? I can actually film Richard through this tree. He's just poking through. There you go. Look at that. And there's all sorts of bits of aluminium in there and all sorts of nonsense, plastic. You know, this is all poison to the ground. But more than that, what really concerned me about this is look up there, Dan. Look yeah. at that tree. We've got a couple of tonne of timber there. Uh, if this comes down, it'd be like a couple of vans falling on you. You know? And if this carries on, this is going to come down. And the people who've made the fire are going to be responsible for that. And if it hits someone, they're going to be responsible for that. And that's something they're going to have to live with for the rest of their life. And that, that would be a terrible thing for anybody. It would be a terrible thing for the people that get hurt, but it would also be a terrible thing for the, the people who, who, who caused it, you know? And I know, I, I'm an old man, you know, I, I, I'm in my 60s. I know you do things when you're younger, yeah? That you regret when you're older, and you can't do anything about them when you're older. You just sit there and live with the regret, you know? And I don't want the people who caused this fire to have to live with the regret of not only injuring a tree, and trees are going to become hugely important in the fight against climate change over the next uh, coming decades. You know, they reckon in a hundred years we're going to be in real trouble with the climate, and the, and the only thing that's going to really help save us are trees. And someone's going to have to live with the fact that they killed a tree. But worse than that, if it injures someone, they're going to have to live with the fact that it injured. Well, when we spoke, you so you described, I never really thought about a tree falling over. Uh, how, how heavy do you estimate this tree to be? Oh, I, I reckon we've got a couple of tons of timber there. I reckon, it, I reckon it could be, or maybe up to three tons of timber, which is about the weight of the average, you know, uh, two small vans. And if a tree falls, it's, it's not only, oh, you know, let's just take it off here. The, the ground, oh, no, it would no. be quite a... They reckon with trees, more or less what you can see above the ground is going on below the ground. <laughs> you know? So if this tree falls, the ground all the way around it is going to fly up in the air. Yeah? Yeah. This is going to splinter yeah? and lumps of oak, which is one of the hardest woods we've got, is going to fly everywhere. You know? So if someone's sitting there when this comes down, they're in real trouble. And it's no, it's no good trying to run. Because, it, it's gonna, you know, if you run in the wrong direction, you've had it, yeah. you know, and, uh, and it'll happen really quickly. It won't be a <laughs> timber, it'll, it'll be a bang, a crack and a fall. It's just, I mean, from this side here, you can see, like, straight through to the other side. Yeah, you've got, it seems I mean, like this piece here... And this piece here is holding the tree in the ground. It's still growing, it's still alive. But I think one more fire like this and that'll be the end of it. And uh, it'll be a terrible thing to be responsible for. Like I said, these are, these, are the, these are the base of our ecological system, oak trees. They're wonderful creatures and uh, to kill one like that is just it's beyond, it's beyond belief, isn't it? Yeah. Just beyond belief. And. Um, Whoever's, whoever's been doing this, re you really need to think about this, you know. You're doing something you've got to live with for the rest of your life, you know. And the worst thing in life as you get older is regret. And you won't be able to replace a tree that's 150 years old. You won't be able to put it back. You know, you'll never be able to put it back. And so um, whoever's doing it, stop. Don't do it. I, I've noticed this has happened a few places uh, around Cumbran. Uh, I don't know who's doing it, and, uh, and I don't want to accuse anyone of doing it. But uh, whoever's doing it, burning trees, don't do it. It's mm. the worst thing you could possibly do. We're depending on trees to save our planet. You know, you're, 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 not, you're not just hurting a tree, 
You're hurting your own species. You're hurting it. You're hurting your children, your grandchildren. You're hurting it's your relatives. You know, just don't. Yeah. And if you, any parents out there, if your kids are coming home smelling of smoke, ask them. I mean, every, all kids set little fires in the woods. They have campfires. So that's fine. Yeah, everyone does that. And everyone's done it. But ask them if they're killing trees because. We really need to stop this and we need to stop it immediately. Yes, it's, I'm just going to do another little loop around. I just can't believe it. I don't know if I'm going to camera underneath. I mean, we've done. There we go, we've got underneath it there. There you go, you actually see right up inside there, can't you? Jeez. Yeah. Well, a tree lives on its bark. It's, a, it's the bark and the, and the first inch of the wood that makes the tree live, you know? Yeah. This whole system runs up the outside of the tree. And that's what keeps it alive. So it, it could it could survive if it's left alone. Now this tree could survive and mm -hmm. and, and, yeah. and live a, a ripe old life. You, you know, oak trees um, they, they live about 900 years old. They get to about 900 years old. So they they spend um, they they say they spend 300 years growing. Yeah, they spend 300 years sitting, and then they spend. 300 years dying. <laughs> <laughs> They're wonderful things. They're wonderful things. And everything lives off it. You know, the acorns, the, the bark. Like I said, 38 species of birds depend on oak trees, you know. Over a thousand types of insects live on oak trees. You know, they support so much life. So about two and a half thousand species live around and or on or off an oak tree. Even their leaves, even the, even the old leaves that fall on the ground support a mass of, of, of micro uh, life, you know? It's, they're a really important tree. We don't need to lose them. We, every single tree is precious. Every single one. We should be planting them by the thousands. Unfortunately, we haven't got the, the political will to do that, but we should be planting thousands of trees. I like where we are now. I mean, the, the, the woods is beautiful. Like if um, if you can hear some cars down there, that's just the corner of a sort of Teagreen Way, Teagreen Road, Teagreen Tee Green Road, and then down towards Tesco Express. You can see the cars sort of turning. We're that close, and then you've got this beautiful woods. Just yeah, and people, people, lots I, of people use this road. Lots of people walk through this. You know, I mean, it's gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. And the species of trees. You know, in in Wales, we've got a whole folklore culture around trees, yeah? the, the oak tree is a, the tree of, um, of doors to other wolves, to the fairy kingdom, but it's also the tree of strength, yeah? uh, the beech, yeah? beech tree is the tree of knowledge, you know, and uh, the hazel, the hazel is a tree of magic, you know, which I'm pointing at the white tree, yeah. <laughs> oh wait, so, right there, sorry, sorry, Yep. Yeah, they're, 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 they're a tree in. of inspiration and magic. Yeah. Yeah. There's uh, stories in the in the, in Welsh folklore about like three hazelnuts causing magic when they're eaten by a salmon and things like that. It's gorgeous. But they're also the tree of uh, inspiration. But this it's what dowsers use to find water. You know, so the, maybe that has an effect on its idea of inspiration. Yes. And then we got poor forms in here that uh, 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 white thorn in Welsh, um, female tree of uh, a tree of female aspects and female strength, you know. And uh, it's, it's the wood that burns hotter than any other wood. And, uh, it's beautiful. The, our whole culture and uh, folklore is built up around the woods and forests, and uh, we really need to protect them. Do. I'm just gonna, as we walk past, if you'd have just joined the video here, this is the tree that Richard contacted me about. And it's just, it's just incredible how this, again, we estimate 150, 150 years old, possibly weighed three ton. And he described, if this goes down, it's not like a sort of cartoon, it, it'll be quite a bit of area that'll be flipping up, shards of incredibly strong what wood. What it is, what do you reckon, it's, it's, it's 60 foot? Yeah. yeah. It's got a good chance of hitting the footpath down there. Yeah. The subway. You know? And this is a route for kids to go to school. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a very dangerous thing to do. You know? If it's left, it's got a good chance of 
surviving. But yeah, so right underneath it there. Uh, and then you can see daylight straight through to the other side. Right then, cheers for your time, Rich. You're very welcome. I'm sure we'll meet again. I say we had a great walk. Please, who's ever do this, leave the trees alone. It's essential for our survival. Cheers.